So what happens to the Terminator franchise after the innovative filmmaker of James Cameron departs it? Well, let's find out with my review of Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. When Judgment Day never came to pass in 1997, John Connor became a wayward drifter, still haunted by the specter of that nuclear apocalypse. Yet when two Terminators arrive from the future, Connor's nightmares abruptly shake him back into reality that Judgment Day is inevitable. Connor quickly learns that childhood acquaintance Kate Brewster is also vital to the preservation of this delayed future the reprogrammed T-850 must ensure both of their survivals. Meanwhile, the highly advanced T-X attempts to hunt them down, along with their future lieutenants and the human resistance. Ultimately, John and Kate's destiny rapidly approaches, as Skynet is now mere hours from going online, leaving humanity on the verge of near extinction. So I think it should come as no surprise to anyone that after the mega blockbuster success that was Terminator 2, someone was always interested in potentially making a third film and making a whole lot more money. And through the rest of the 90s, the uh, development and sort of rights issues with the Terminator franchise kind of floated around without a lot of solidarity or whatnot that... James Cameron announced the T3, but never had any solid plans, never had a script in place, never had anything going, and things kind of fell apart with the studio of 20th Century Fox that him and Gail Ann Hurd were talking with, and things just kind of fell apart, and rights went off to different places, and uh, bought up by new producers and everything, and uh, so we got development on a third film in the early 2000s, and it ultimately took well, 12 years before we got... Terminator 3. Now I did see this film when it was first theatrically released. Wrote a review of it, didn't think very highly of it, but I still was kind of interested to see it again to reassess it. And now watching it for a third time ultimately or so. I think my opinion has actually gone down on this film since I first saw it. Because I don't think this is... It's not a wholly terrible film. There are some good qualities in this film, but... There was just something wrong with this film. Because you look at the first two films, you look at the tone of them, and you see a very serious, dramatic tone. Even though there was certainly moments of humor, they were handled in the very right way. They were kind of subtle. They weren't very over the top. They weren't overtly jokey. Then you look at Terminator 3, and you look at the level of stupid comedic bullshit this film has to throw at you in just the first half an hour of it, because, like... I got 30 minutes in this film, I was overloading on the amount of stupid this film had to throw at me. Like when the T-850 shows up and takes the clothes off the male stripper and puts on the Elton John sunglasses for a gag. Or later on when he mimics the male stripper doing the stupid talk to the hand crap. Or when the TX gets pulled over by the cop and inflates her breasts out. It's like a parody of a damn Terminator film, it's not taken seriously. They're just played up these damn characters for stupid laughs and everything. It's like, the first two films, even though they had moments of humor, they never degraded the quality of the characters. It never diminished the integrity of either the Terminators or anything. This film is nothing but a lot of stupid shit. I mean, like, you'll get the scene where Arnold's Terminator rams the truck into the TX and just so happens to not run over Kate Brewster in the process, which is completely damn stupid. It's like something from... A second-rate Michael Bay Transformers type of movie. It's just a lot of stupid-ass bullshit and everything in that type of way. I mean, there are serious points in the film, I'll say that. But overall, the tone of the film very much goes for a sort of a big, over-the-top, cartoony, comic booky type of thing. Which is just like, doesn't sit right with me. Doesn't feel right. Just like... Yeah, there are people who do like this film, and I'm not one of them, because, like I said in the first half an hour of this thing, it bombarded me with so much goddamn stupid crap that I couldn't freaking believe it. I understand the point of this film, even though it largely seems like a completely pointless film to actually exist. But I understand the point of this film is to completely negate the events of Terminator 2 so that you can justify making more sequels. Because, basically, this is a T2 clone 
without any of the depth or humanity or the substance that it had and completely turns everything around saying basically everything that John and Miles Dyson and Sarah and the Terminator did in T2 really was for nothing. It was a bunch of waste of time because the Judgment Day is going to happen anyway and why bother? It just like you negated the events of half of that film trying to just create more cash grab sequels and everything because that's basically the way I see it with this film that there's not much point. There's basically there's action sequence after action sequence and very little substance in this film just to get to the point of like we're just going to rewrite all this stuff and just kind of like say that shit doesn't ma matter at all. The sacrifice of Miles Dyson doesn't matter at all because you know what Skynet happens, Judgment Day happens, and we're all fucked anyway, so what was the point of it? You just waste your time watching a better movie. Watch this movie that shit's all over it in a certain way because our plot is here to negate the existence of that movie, so whatever. But this film really has some other problems that... T2 has a slight problem in this realm because T2 takes place ten years thereabout after the events of the first film, even though it was released in 91, supposed to have happened in 1994, but you'll notice early on in the film, when the T-1000 actually accesses the computer database for the police, says that John Connor is 10 years old and he was born in 1985, so that means the film happens in 1995, even though the Terminator of Arnold's make says they were sent back from 35 years in the future, which kind of doesn't really work, it's saying it was sent back from 2029, so there's a slight incongruity there, but this film takes it in a whole different level because it completely screws up the timeline of that type of way, saying the events of Terminator 2 happened in 1997, a few months before Judgment Day was supposed to happen, saying that John Connor was 13 years old in that film when T2 obviously shows completely on screen John Connor was 10 years old and the film happens in 1995. Terminator 3 completely botches up clearly conveyed facts from Terminator 2 about when things happened in terms of their dates and the years they happened in. It just decides, screw that, we're just going to screw up the whole timeline and just like mm, screw everything up and say, no, this, th these events happened in a completely different year than they actually happened because we can't bother to check the other film to make sure our continuity actually works right and that has really bugged the shit on me ever since the film was released and it pisses me off a little bit too that it can't even get the actual dates of the films that happened before it right obviously shows he didn't really study the previous films very hard if that's the case and yes we do get Arnold Schwarzenegger coming back as the Terminator it's sort of a slightly more advanced model that employs a lot of sort of reverse psychology and deceit and can lie to people and it's a little bit more of a odd type of model and everything to act in a different type of way, which is an interesting thing. I'll give it to the film that it had an interesting idea with that. That is a T850 instead of a T800 and has a bit of a different way of uh, dealing with situations and kind of uh, manipulating events and whatnot around him and people. And just like, it was an interesting idea. Don't think it quite works so well because... When Arnold Schwarzenegger kind of asked James Cameron about starring in the film, Cameron pretty much just told him, Arnold, just take as much money as you can, cash in as much, because it's going to be a big hit no matter what the quality of the film is. And Arnold really isn't doing a great job in this film because, again, there's no James Cameron here to really kind of forge him. But that's not to say that other directors haven't been able to get good performances out of Arnold. I think John McTiernan did a great job with him in Predator. And a couple other films too, like Paul Verhoeven did a great job with him in Total Recall, but Jonathan Mostow clearly isn't that type of director to be able to work with Arnold to motivate him to get a very strong performance out of him. I mean, Arnold does does a little bit more than just a paycheck type of role, but he showed in T2 he could do a whole lot more when you got a damn good filmmaker in there who can really push him, motivate him, focus him in the right direction, really good, right very strong material that isn't so silly and jokey and isn't kind of all over the place in certain places that you've got good ideas in this film but man are they not handled well that this thing just goes off in different directions like I said the tone is like 
really all over the place in terms of just like it's just so over the top and so silly and stupid in certain places that it's really hard to kind of take the film seriously when it really gets a little bit more down to the uh, characters and whatnot and just like Arnold could do better if you really had someone to push him in the right direction but this wasn't the case to do so. And during pre-production they did attempt to get Edward Furlong back to reprise the role of John Connor but Apparently some of his substance abuse problems kind of sprang back up and pretty much tanked him from the film. So they got Nick Stahl to replace him, who I don't think is a poor actor at all, and did probably about the best job he could with the material he was given and the direction at hand. But I personally don't like how the character is portrayed in this film because one day, since Linda Hamilton wouldn't come back, they had to kill off the character of Sarah Connor before the time of the film, victim of leukemia and everything, and uh, you've got John Connor here as this total burnout of life. This guy who, after Judgment Day apparently didn't happen, just kind of fell off the grid and decided to just live his life without direction and just kind of like live in a haunted type of, scared type of mindset that he just like, and it just doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't feel like the character that we got that we saw at the end of Terminator 2, this character who had evolved into the leader, kind of took on a more assertive, confident type of role, that this character would grow up to be a much more stronger type of man. And at this point, he's just this complete, almost loser in a certain way. This guy just like, even as the film progresses, this is a character who's like, he doesn't want to stop Judgment Day to save humanity from it. He just wants to avoid having to face his destiny, having to become the leader of the resistance. He doesn't want to have to become that. He's just like, I'd rather, at one point he puts a gun to his head, he's like, I'd rather just die right now than have anything play out the way I'm destined to have it played out. So it's like, it doesn't feel like the same character to me. There's not the, the problem with the whole film. There's no, none of that Cameron depth of humanity. The substance is not there. It's all stripped away to the bone. There's not really anything there, the deeper humanity, the emotion of the character just isn't there, and you just don't get any of that quality that you had with the character before, it just like, uh, it just doesn't feel right for me, it just like, I mean, at the end of the film, one of the things I really did give credit to the film at the time I originally saw it was, the ending of the film is good, that they, everything that happens in the final few minutes of the film I thought was good, him and Kate Brewster, they go into the bunker, find out they've been kind of deceived and lied to and everything, and that they're pretty much in a fallout shelter that was built decades prior, and this is where they're going to have to start the leadership of the Resistance. I thought that was at least a good moment of the film. If you're going to have a film that does lead to Judgment Day, that is a good, strong scene to have, and that he finally does accept it, that he does become that person, but throughout the whole rest of the film, it just doesn't feel like the same character we had previously, and just like... Like I said, Nick Stahl, I don't think he does a poor performance with the material he was given, but overall I don't think the character was written or portrayed the way that anyone would really kind of want him to be, that from the character you saw Edward Furlong play up to the end of T2, doesn't feel like the same character here, and even he gets some stupid moments too, that why in this film when he sees the new Terminator think that this is the exact same Terminator with the exact same memories that got molten in the steel and everything in the previous film that got completely destroyed. Why would he see this Terminator and think, oh, you're the same one. Why, why don't you remember all the stuff we did in the last film? That's stupid as hell. That's not an intelligently written thing. It's like if it was a James Cameron film, he wouldn't put a line like that in there. You never got a stupid line of that sort in any kind from any of the previous films. It just... Not on its basis alone, it's a stupid type of thing. Why would he do that? I think it's just there just to reference the other film for no good reason whatsoever. And just like, I think Claire Danes does a fine job in the film. I don't really have a whole lot to say about her because, again, a lot of the characters just don't have much substance. There's not much to them. I think she does, she's a very capable, strong actress. Kind of takes on a little bit of the Sarah Connor type of a baggage, but not too much because there's just... The film is extremely thin on plot and very heavy on spectacle and action, which I think is also kind of comes across a little dull that, that a lot of the action sequences, like the big major chase sequence in the film with the uh, the crane truck and all that kind of type of stuff, yeah, it's all staged out pretty all right and everything. There's a lot of heavy destruction. It gets a little kind of comical at times. 
but it's also kind of comes off as dull because there's no score behind it. There's no score to really kind of amplify the sequence, kind of enhance the emotion, enhance the thrills, enhance the drama of it. And the sequence just kind of goes back and forth between two different chases, and it just it just doesn't do anything for me. The action of the film just doesn't do anything for me. That's just a simple thing. And even Marco Beltrami's score, which... For the life of me, I don't even know why I have the soundtrack CD over my shoulder here. I don't know why I own it. It's not that good of a score. It just kind of... Nah, it's very orchestral when Brad Fidel's scores previously had been very electronic based. Giving it a... reflecting that sort of tech noir type of uh, idea and everything. That it remained very electronic and synthesizer heavy. This thing is very orchestral and it doesn't quite sound like it fits with the other two films. And uh, he's not a terrible composer. He's done some good stuff here and there, but uh, on the whole, it's just like it's not the same style of score. It doesn't feel like it really kind of does anything to elevate the quality of the film overall. And uh, something that doesn't elevate anything at all. Christiana Locon, portraying the TX or Terminatrix, as you want to call her, which they do call her in the film, kind of stupid or whatnot, but no, you're trying to replicate. Robert Patrick's performance as a T-1000, but there's no skill involved here. It's it's completely superficial, sort of exactly what they were trying not to do in the first place. Rigid, mechanical motions and everything. It's just like, it's very stiff. It's very hollow performance. There's no nuance with what she does with the performance of the TX in this film. And also, a lot of the violence in this film does feel toned down that the the tone of it all is because it's so played up so over the top and kind of cartoonish and whatnot. You lose the sense of menace, the sense of intensity and like in the first film. T-800 just knocks on the door, bursts through it, shoots the first Sarah Connor dead. You don't see anything graphic, but because of how it's played out, you feel tension, you feel a certain menace with the character or even when the T-1000 first shows up. There's just a certain sense of foreboding there. There's certain weight and what happens there, just like a certain uneasy tension and that sort of thing. Here's like, at the time I did kind of give a little bit of credit that you did have the TX kind of bursting in, doing a lot of stuff that like Arnold did in the first film where he just kind of bursts through doors and everything and just mer just coldly kills people here and there, but doesn't really sell as strongly, doesn't have that weight, doesn't have that menace, doesn't, doesn't have that. A lot of it's the execution, a lot of it's the performance, just like Various things just don't quite add up with the character. But on its own merits, I think the idea of Judgment Day is inevitable, is an interesting idea that eventually something is going to develop a technology that could possibly become Skynet or Skynet-like to kind of overrun things. I just wish the film had more substance to actually add something more to it than just a thin type of plot that is very doesn't have a very good tone to it. It's not... Uh, it's a very soft type of film. It's very hard to think that, aside from a one or two moments, that this is a very R-rated film. It, if you took out like one glory moment and maybe a little bit of the uh, ass cheeks at the beginning of the thing, this could probably easily pass for a PG-13 movie, in my opinion, because it just doesn't have any of the edge, doesn't have any of the intensity, doesn't have any of the, the raw feel of the first film or the kind of big sort of action spectacle and sort of uh, gory moments that the second film did have. It just feels very toned down, pulled back, kind of playing it safe here and there. I think the cinematography of the film is not all that fantastic either. It just feels a little too... It's also from the same cinematographer who shot Sam Raimi's Spider-Man film and feels a whole lot like it in the lighting and the color timing and just how the thing has just kind of a... these. Just the way it's shot overall just doesn't feel like it fits. It has a very orangey color scheme as opposed to the steely blues of the previous two films. Just like, there's a lot of things here that just overall don't fit. Tonally, visually, all this character stuff. A lot of the emotion is very stripped out. Just a lot of the stuff doesn't feel like it's a continuation of these same characters. The same universe overall. It's just like, I can accept that. Changes in the timeline happen. Things are get altered. Dates get pushed back. Things get screwed up and everything. And that a different future produces different technology or stuff like that. Just like, but it's just not that good of a film. There's not enough substance in the characters. Not enough substance in the script. Not the 
right director is probably I've never seen anything else from Jonathan Mostow, so I can't really gauge this against his other filmography. I've heard other people say that it's not very well representative of what he's done previous to this film that is very much much more serious type of stuff. But overall, maybe it's just too many cooks in the kitchen kind of screwing up the stew and everything and kind of messing things up because I don't doubt it. There is like two or three screenwriters on this film, a lot of producers, a lot of people at the studio probably wanting to meddle things up and because it's such a big property it could be a major money maker which it was off of a 187 million dollar budget earned back 433 million dollars so it made a certainly made a success of itself not as much as the previous film though because it cost more and made less and you'll see that again but uh it's a film that probably just got screwed up from a lot of people just getting in the way of the the script, the story, maybe not the right people involved to actually make it the best it possibly could have been. Obviously, Arnold probably didn't care a whole lot for doing what he had to do. He didn't care a whole lot for the script. He just took the money and did the film and moved on and became a governor of California and shit like that. And whatever the case, it's like, just had political aspirations on the rise. Just like, one more big uh, paycheck, you know, before I go off into the political arena and everything. So, I don't know. But Terminator 3, no, I just, I was just, like I said, I was just uh, baffled. I was just shocked at the level of stupidity this film kept rolling out at me. I mean, visual effects are good. A lot of the good stuff, I liked how they kind of evolved some of the uh, usage of digital effects when Arnold got all damaged. You could kind of see right through him and everything. It's nice ideas and everything, but still kind of, eh, it's not, not great. Not that visual effects are too fantastic or anything. I just... In the style of the film just doesn't work for me. Just like, no. And by no means do I really have any kind of vile hatred towards Terminator 3, but I also don't think it's a very good movie. Probably by the evidence that is the one thing missing from this collection back here that... Never really liked it. This is only the third time I've ever seen it. And that's probably more times than I really deserve to give it. Because it just wasn't very good, but... Some people do enjoy the film, and if you're one of those, sure, ahead, go ahead, post what you enjoy about the film. Or, if again, if you don't like it, go ahead and share those thoughts, too. So, comments below, if you want to. Hit the like buttons if you enjoyed the review, or what have you. Pretty much enjoy getting your guys' feedback, and you guys spreading the word around, sharing links. Pretty much helps things. And, uh, I'll be back, hopefully, with a little bit more Terminator stuff in the near future. But uh, enjoy what you got here. Hope you enjoyed overall. And uh, so take care, guys. Bye-bye.